Yeah, it's really fantastic because I look through your podcast and see all the people you've hosted. I see a lot of familiar names and people that both of us have gotten to meet and talk to. What has it meant to you to start a podcast and be able to talk with these people uh, one on one? Well, I think it's it's like I'm saying, it's about me staying connected was one thing and learning. Um, I really I get that a real great sense of um, of uplift after I've had a conversation with you know somebody like yourself um, or one of my guests. Um, and I tend to be because that it's it's a huge time sink doing a podcast, as you well know. And um, so I do tend to be um, quite choosy about the shows that I go on and um the the people I meet and the people I have on mine and that's um it's really because I want to connect authentically um with with people I feel like are putting good work out in the world so I mean my main aim of the podcast was for me to do my little bit to help to progress what I think is really important metabolic health um solutions and options and real authentic options for people nothing salesy or spammy but those people out there in the world like yourself who are, who are pushing um really good choices for people and and helping to elevate that information because without those people that we're talking to without without these types of podcasts and these forums you know families would not be accessing super important information that it really can make the difference to their longevity, but you know their quality of life. So it means it actually means a real big amount to me. So uh, I'm happy to contribute, and then you know have to keep learning. Uh, I love that. It's really interesting. I don't think there's many topics out there that would drive that type of passion and desire to share a message. Um, it it seems like this is such a message that is is so hard to find and it's only kind of grassroots movements that are, you know, people talking about this kind of thing. But once this topic grabs you and you start to see the results and you start to try to share this, you can't really stop. And it, it, you're right. Like it's not about selling anything or trying to spam people with stuff. It's just, you really, really want to get the information out there in any way that you can. It's really an interesting kind of topic in that way. Mm, I think, think you've hit on something there that, um sometimes I feel like I'm talking to people locally or I'm having conversations and it's um nutrition and the particular styles of nutrition can sound a little tribal a little a little boring perhaps you know when I'm talking to my uh, teenage son or you know they don't understand where the passion comes from but it's actually experiencing the power of food um I if you told me maybe 15 years ago that I would be starting my own podcast and talking to people and engaging with people and going to conferences and talking a great deal about nutrition and what people could be putting in their bodies and how it would fuel them. I, I would have thought you were mad because it just wasn't a passion of mine at the time until I saw the difference in my own family um, and not just seeing the difference. And it was you know, huge difference to, to me personally, to my family. But also I feel like there's a huge sense for me of wanting to work in this space because a sense of injustice. I feel that it's just not okay not to give people the, this information. And then they don't have to eat this way. Um, I'm not prescriptive. If, every, if, if this information was out there that you're putting out in the world and others, um, and um, people could make a choice to take it, leave it, try it, feel the difference, feel the energy and the better sleep and better immunity and um, better mental health now, as we know. Um, then, you know, I, I go off and do my painting or do whatever else and live a quite happy life. But I feel like I've just got, a, you know, on a, on a mission because I'm really angry about it. I feel we weren't given information that was fundamental to our children's health and and still decades and decades and decades after people have been pushing ketogenic diet for example um it's still you know people are not being told and people are still being dissuaded from these diet choices yeah that's a really good point if you went off and just did your painting that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world i complimented your painting behind you uh, before we started recording before i even knew that you painted it it is absolutely <laughs> beautiful Some kids on the beach absolutely beautiful paintings that wouldn't be the worst thing but you're right i think we have a, a bigger kind of sense of a mission to get this message out there and this message mm. for you did start like we talked about in the introduction with your children primarily mm. before it was your own health that was a concern it was the health of your children 
That's right. Um, we we you know, we lived in a beautiful area in England. We had um, our two children, um, two under two, so super busy. Um, and we were pretty healthy and we ate, I thought, really healthily. Um, made my homemade pasta. We ate pasta quite a bit. Um, had um, snacks. And then when I decided, when I had children and wanted to clean up um, our foods, um, I ended up making homemade treats instead so we didn't buy any junk or chocolate bars or ice creams or takeaways or and takeouts so I would make these date treats for the children with dark chocolate and all of those types of things it wasn't until later that I realized how much I'd increased their sugar load by by those you know 50 to 70 percent date treats that I was making thinking they were all natural but um, I started to look into nutrition firstly with my son because he just had um, skin complaints you know lots of children do they have cradle cap a bit of eczema and it progressed and progressed he was really uncomfortable um summer nights when it was really hot it was just it was really he was distressed he couldn't sleep properly and um I think it was we we tried elimination diets and we tried natural remedy creams that people suggested we went to different doctors and different consultants we changed hospital and I had a conversation with I remember one particular consultant and I was saying right so now we have his hairs falling out in, in bunches. We have a, a, a alopecia. We've got this um, a tacari, the welts that appear when he eats something or when he touches wood. Um, mold spores, perhaps, that was causing that. And then we've got um, eczema, so he's bleeding in the same places again and again in the creases of his elbow. Uh, so what you know, what's linking all of this and what's the underlying cause that, that's at the bottom of it all? And he was like, with you know, with the NHS, we we're going to treat this topically, each one separately. We're not going to look into it, and we're not going to link them. So try this next cream, try these steroids, and off you go. And it was, I suppose, then it was just a you know a light bulb moment of like, we need to get to this ourselves. You know, we we're, we're not going to get to the bottom of it otherwise. So did a lot of research and ended up putting him on what I called at the time a gut healing and. Um, food protocol and um, very much gaps inspired western a price inspired if you, you probably come across those and talked about those type of approaches um and it was very much um really really great quality meat and um, stews casseroles but min no fruit took away all those sweet date things that i was making um off off a lot of them um, what typically families would eat and it was very repetitive very few vegetables and um yeah within within weeks we noticed a difference and he's never had hair fall out since um you know everything improved within within three months um we were on a beach we went on holiday and I remember seeing him in the water and his skin was just glowing and it was healthy it had all recovered and he wasn't crying from the salt water like the last time it was game changing and it was the only thing we changed radically was was his food. So, so then wow. it was just understanding um, how quickly you can heal. And it was within weeks, within one to two weeks, that he stopped scratching his skin, and then it took weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to recover then from from all the damage he'd done. But it was the the itching had gone. So, so yeah, off we were. Really fascinated then with um, the power of food. Um, tallow was a big part of our food journey we started making our own tallow um, and eating a lot more fat a lot more red meat and it was absolutely delicious as well uh, that sounds amazing I, I'm curious like after going through all the different creams and potions and treating everything separately like you said what gave you the idea that the common link might be nutrition I think most people wouldn't even consider that that would be the thing that would influence all of those things what made you have that idea Mm, I think um, that's probably a good point. I think I think um, we suspected food because it's what you put in. And I do think that a lot of families, when they've got something like an allergy or not an allergy, but an intolerance or reaction to food. Um, you know, when you when you talk to somebody who's breastfeeding, for example, and the child isn't sleeping, I think they often naturally instinctively go to oh, what am I eating? You know, I think there's a little bit of 
knowledge there that there's some connection to food and what we're putting in our body. I think the dissonance disconnect is we don't know where to go with that because we've had such poor messaging and the wisdom of food has been lost. So I think I think I had um, my husband too, who's totally on board and he did a lot of research. We did a lot of reading. I think, I think it was just, we went, I feel like we went down some wrong turns with what we looked into, um, but it was, it was having an instinct that it would be what you're putting inside your body could make a difference um, and we you know we were lucky that that it had such drastic impact on him um and we we also were making skin balms for him as well to nourish his skin out of tallow so tallow was a huge theme so we were treating it topically ourselves as well yeah, I love my tallow skincare products. Such a game changer. Really just it helps yeah. your your skin feel lovely. I love it. Um, we all, it, 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 it I was going to say, we, we did smell, because we were making our own, um, we did smell like a roast dinner <laughs> most days. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just asked a skincare expert who makes tallow skin products how you can make tallow products at home without making them smell. I guess you can kind of like, she described it as like washing. Is that something that you ever tried with your tallow products? Yeah, and it's clarification, it's repeated clarification and at, at a low temperature to preserve the nutrients as well. Um, so, it, yeah, it depends how far you, you want to go with it and the equipment that you've got. And if you're being lazy, you'll just smell more of roast dinner. But, but we definitely got it. <laughs> we definitely got it cleaner and um, a, a nicer smell as well. Yeah, and softer as well.